Let's start discussing the 7 R of migration strategies. For every discovered application in the customer's current environment, we need to select one of seven migration strategies. We need to select a migration strategy and the selection criteria would be dependent on factors such as cost, time, and priority. Let's explore each one of them separately. The first strategy is to retain the workload and keep it where it is running. In other words, do not migrate. Either forever or maybe at least for now. We can revisit that in the future. The reasons behind that can be compliance or data regulations. Also, maybe it is a latency-sensitive application that I would like to keep on-premises, close to my on-premises clients. This workload, at least for now, will be out of the scope of migration. It can happen that after making the detailed discovery of the existing infrastructure find out that there are some servers and machines up and running, and no one uses them actually. This can happen for example when we launch some test machines, complete the tests, then forget about them and leave them behind. Or maybe we had an application server that is running a certain version, then we upgrade to a new version, and gradually every client moves to the new version, leaving the old version there, up and running but no one keep using it at all. There is a market term used to describe these inactive machines and servers. They are called zombie VMs. And definitely, the right and wise choice here is not to migrate them. The best strategy, in this case, is to retire these machines. Retire means that you kill these workloads, at least power them off, or decommission them and delete. This is definitely going to be out of the scope of migration. The next migration strategy is called rehost, or lift and shift. This is the most popular strategy and actually, the most used strategy to migrate the majority of the workloads to the cloud in a short time with not so much effort. With rehost, you move the workload as is, with no changes at all. You keep the same architecture. You need just a migration tool that is capable of connecting to the source environment, reading and understanding its format, copying it to the target environment, which is AWS in our case, and replicating the setup with the same architecture using the target's environment technology and services. As we can see in the slide as an example, we are replicating VMware virtual machines with their virtual disks to AWS as EC2 instances and EBS volumes attached to them. The next migration strategy is called replatform. Sometimes we refer to it as lift, tinker then shift. Tinker means that you are expected to make slight modifications without affecting or changing the core of the architecture. You are just changing the platform through which the application would run. A typical example of replatform is when you decide to migrate to a managed service on AWS. You still need a migration tool, but the target this time is going to be a managed service on AWS. As you can see, in our example here, we replatformed a database server on premises to an Amazon RDS instance instead of rehosting it as a traditional EC2. The next strategy is refactor, which we call it sometimes rewrite or rearchitect. With this strategy, you decide to completely eliminate and drop the old application architecture that was running on premises and rewrite the whole code and application again from scratch, but after changing it to rely on cloud native capabilities and features. This is more complex than the previous strategies and usually takes a longer time. We would prefer to postpone the refactoring and modernization efforts for your application to be post-migration, unless it is a must-to-do task during migration, as in some cases, customers do have legacy architectures with old setup and obsolete components that mandates a refactoring strategy while migrating to AWS. A typical example of that is when you decide to decompose your application and replace it with a group of Lambda functions and adopt a serverless architecture. On premises, you might be running some third party solutions that you wish to keep using after migrating to AWS. No need to migrate them, 
as you can easily repurchase them through AWS Marketplace as software as a service. This is another strategy, known as repurchase or drop and shop. We will discuss the AWS Marketplace in more detail in the next section of the training. The last strategy to discuss is the relocate strategy. In this case, the source and target environments will be running the same typical technologies. Then it becomes very easy to move the workload around without even the need to rely on a migration tool or to do any conversion. Just use native tools to copy and move the workload. There are two popular examples of the usage of this strategy. The first one is when you get a solution called VMware Cloud on AWS. You can get on top of AWS some physical servers and have them run VMware ESXi, so now you can run your VMware virtual machines on AWS. You do not need to rely on third parties to move your VMs, with proper integration between your VMware environment on-premises and AWS, you can just use VMware vMotion capability to relocate the virtual machines. The second usage of this strategy is when you got on-premises some containerized, dockerized applications, and you want them to be relocated to the cloud. You can simply push your Docker container to a repository and then pull it back on the AWS target.